everybody, welcome back to Zeke's Lunchbox. All right, so we're doing another tarot card. Uh, this is the eighth one that I have done in the series. It feels so good to have a big chunk of them done. They look incredible all together. And yeah, it's just exciting me a lot. And um, there's still a long way to go, but I just want to appreciate where I've come so far with it all. And this week, we're going to chat about the Death card, a pretty famous... I would say one of the most famous cards in tarot. I feel like in tarot cards, this card is like the most famous one that comes up and it gets pulled out for like comedic purposes. And it's like, ooh, death. The protagonist gets like freaked out or whatever. It's a pretty obvious card, which I will go through the history of the meaning uh, of this card. For anybody who is new here, I am basing my tarot card deck off the Rider Waite tarot card deck, the traditional one. And uh, I kind of base a lot of my artistic design decisions on that and then yeah I'll take you through all the differences and what I chose to do differently and what the card means so uh, before we head into that let's do a little check-in hello everyone do I have this on backwards I think I do I've got my jumper on backwards I feel like I always put on my clothes backwards or inside out. All right, hello everybody. Welcome to another tarot card, another check-in. Getting into the grind with all the tarot cards now. I'm just obsessed with how they're all laying out and I've got a nice story unfolding with all of them, especially with like all the colors that I'm choosing. Anyway, it'll make more sense when I have more examples to show you guys. Okay, but today we're talking about the death card. I've got a new routine with the cards. I draw two at a time and then paint one after the other. That way I'm not constantly like stopping and starting. And I find that once I've got a painting flow on, I find it a lot easier to just like roll straight into the next painting. So as soon as I finished the moon, I went straight into the death card. Uh, the Hermit and Death are on the same plane in tarot, so I want all of the colors to kind of be pretty similar with all of the planes. So I am finding, I'm getting a little frustrated because I love the sketch so much, I'm, and I'm finding that I've got a bit of like performance anxiety when it comes to actually rendering it. I find that interesting and weird because I don't normally feel like that when I'm painting. I do feel, however, uh, I've had to stop and start a lot painting this card, so that's been kind of frustrating. I think that's why I'm feeling like I'm not rendering it the way I want to. I just haven't had like big blocks of time to paint. I've just been doing little bursts here and there. And I find when I do little bursts over a long period of time, I start to get really over the image and it's it's lost its like newness. So that's why I try and paint pretty quickly and dedicate a lot of like time like blocked in together because the newness wears off. I am gonna edit a video and then I'll hopefully be able to paint later on today. Like I was saying before, uh, I'm basing my deck off the Rider Waite collection of tarot cards. So the traditional card has a messenger of death uh, riding a white horse with armor coming around and claiming bodies. The traditional meaning of this particular card, for anybody who doesn't know with tarot cards, a lot of it is just symbolisms in your life doesn't necessarily mean verbatim what the card is representing. So obviously death doesn't necessarily mean a death, a real life death, but it might be a death of something else that is happening in your life. Uh, it's similar to the world. I am finding that a lot of the cards kind of have this recurring theme of like, rejuvenation starting over again. If you wanna see that video and hear about the world, you can head over and uh, watch my playlist on all the tarot cards. When, when you're doing a reading, this card ultimately means that there is a death of something happening in your life. Whether that's you finishing school and you're starting something fresh, death of a relationship, uh, so things of that nature. So the card when it's upright means creation, destruction, or transition. So it's ultimately, you know, pretty obvious. It's it's something is going to come to an end, you know? When the card is upside down, however, or reversed, the key words that have been listed here are living unaware, depression, long-term illness, resistance to change, delayed endings. So a lot of the time in tarot, when a card is reversed, it is basically the antithesis of whatever the 
upright is saying. Typically, um, the upright is positive and reversed is negative. Uh, so far from the cards that I've done, the only time that it has been the other way around has been with the moon, uh, which you can also watch on my channel. Let's chat about all the symbols that I've chosen for my specific card and uh, why I kind of went with that. Uh, obviously, I wanted to replace the scythe with something a little bit less menacing. The death card is incredibly, has a very masculine energy. I don't know if that's uh, right or wrong or if you know that's officially what it's meant to be but to me it's a very you know metalhead uh masculine card so i wanted to put some like feminine energy into this one i also with the original card it has way too many symbols in it i do find like a lot of the original tarot stuff has too many symbols and I understand for readings that's really important but uh, from a stylistic point of view it's really cluttered and I like a lot of breathing room in my pieces that way it has like some busy areas and then some quieter areas. Um, the original card it does have a horseman riding on a white horse. I did at first want to do a white horse uh, but then it just I do find that painting white is very difficult because you lose a lot of contrast and depth. Because it's my deck I wanted to you know do something a little bit more otherworldly, something a little bit more alien. So I just thought um, a centaur, a skull, skeletal centaur uh, felt really strong to me and I really liked that energy uh, coming through it. So with the scythe and the caterpillar, the original flag that the uh, death card holds is, I think it's a flower of some sort, but basically all the symbols that are in the original card are basically just about rebirth and death. So what better way to represent that than a caterpillar with the butterflies coming through? Hello. So where I'm up to at the moment, I think I said before, uh, I haven't had big blocks of time with the this particular tarot card. Like always, I'm struggling with the landscape. I just can't quite pin what it is. I, well, I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to landscapes. I feel like I need to seriously do like a study sessions episode where I just focus on like really dynamic landscapes because it's getting really frustrating to me how I can't like, I can't paint something. Like I can paint it, but I'm not thriving at it. Like it just looks a little bit boring you know when I was sketching it I, I thought like a plane would be fine because it, the focus is all on the main character but yeah it's just looking a little bit boring now the scythe I think that's what it's called you know how death they have like the big blade thing I think it's called a scythe is that how it's pronounced let me know in the comments below I, I get a lot of comments from you guys about my accent so I don't know is it a skit that doesn't sound right Scythe? So the Scythe caterpillar uh, character thing that the horseman is holding, bug is proving to be incredibly difficult. I think the lighting is really challenging me. I just, um, if you guys have seen a lot of my other work, you'll see like I kind of choose one kind of lighting, which is kind of like a side light. So yeah, landscapes and lighting are something that I really need to focus on a lot more. The tarot card project's been really amazing in that uh, it's really pushed me when it comes to my technical skills and also just like adhering a brief to my style as well and seeing how all of that can come about. So I just, I'm getting to a point where I'm like, starting to get a little bit itchy with the piece where it's like I just I just want it to be done but I'm only halfway so yeah I'll check in with you guys in a couple more days and see where it's at so just continuing on with the symbolism that I have chosen pillars in the background the red pillars with the sun coming through I thought it was funny that I had just finished the moon because I did do two pillars with the stack of animals and those two towers are meant to be the same in both of those cards so it's meant to be the same symbol in both cards the red pillars giving that illusion of stability basically saying that nothing is permanent everything will change. Change is imminent. Uh, the bodies on the ground, didn't want to do full bodies just because I felt like, again, it was so cluttered and it just had a little bit too much. I wanted to choose a wide variety of heads. <laughs> I don't think I did that very obviously, but you get the idea of death has no prejudice. You know, it doesn't matter what color, uh, age or 
creed. Okay, so I just wanna go through a couple of the notes that I had written uh, when I was researching the card, just for some more like background or maybe some other ideas about the card that maybe could have been explored a little bit more. Some other interpretations of this card are Hades. I thought I wrote that down because I really love a lot of Greek mythology and uh, I thought maybe that could play a little bit into this card. Um, I do try and find just a couple of other influences just in case I get stuck with a bit and I just need to pull some more elements and history into a piece. Uh, that didn't really make the cut I guess with this one. And also in some of the other decks Cerebus which is the um, Hounds of Hades. Uh, I believe it's the dog with like three heads. I thought that could have been cool as well but this card was already, I'm not gonna lie, the card was already kind of a bit of a technical challenge for me just with the horse and the skull and just I'd never done anything like that before so I thought that doing something with like multiple heads and multiple bodies might be a little bit too hard for me. I definitely want to try and find another card where I could possibly explore that idea. So it keep a little note for that. Oh, and I did see when I was researching the flag uh, is meant to be in your face, so it's like an announcement. So in the tarot card, it's not, although death is represented, the scythe isn't. And this, my caterpillar flag scythe is kind of meant to be both a scythe and a flag. I feel like it can be amorphous for both reasons. You know, it's one going to do the deed of death, but also is announcing, surprise, bitch, I'm here. <laughs> Uh, another thing that I just want to mention when I was researching this card, because there was a rose and a skull, I tried my hardest to stay away from a lot of like uh, Mexican themed artwork or anything that related to Frida Kahlo, just because I just, or you know, that whole Mexican vibe. I just really consciously stayed away from that sort of stuff for this particular card. Not that because I don't like that, uh, aesthetic. I just feel like right now, one, it's been done to death and I just, it didn't feel honest to me, to be quite frank. And I think that's all that I have in my research. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Stay tuned for my last uh, thoughts and uh, the final card. Okay, we're at the end. Um, I'm so happy this is finally done. That took so much longer than I wanted it to. I really like this card, obviously. Uh, I think it's like a really striking card, but I did get like a weird melancholy feel when I finished it because it was like, I instantly thought it just could have been better had I changed the landscape. But you know, that's the whole process of it. So uh, you only really learn by failing. Not that I think this is a fail, I just think that the landscape could have been pushed a little bit stronger. Now looking at it, now that it's finished, I kind of wish the landscape, first of all, I'm not doing any more plateaus. I think it really disrupts the whole flow of the piece and I just, I don't like it. I don't think it's complementary to whatever is in the piece. I think I mostly, I mostly tend to do planes as in like flat lands because <sighs> I see a lot of like Dali's work and that's just like subconsciously what's in there. I really don't like it. I feel like the subject matter should have been in like a crevasse framed by two mountains or on a cliff face possibly. I'm, I'm not sure. The original card has a lot going on in the background so uh, I wanted mine to be a little bit more simple. It was really hard finding reference photos for the dismembered heads. One, it's a very awkward thing to google because I don't want to give myself PTSD. Ugh, there's just so much whack stuff on the internet and yeah that doesn't that doesn't do it for me I'm afraid. So I had to google a lot of people who were 
sleeping. And uh, the heads I feel like could have been a little better. I knew when I was designing it, I should have put maybe like some more bodies and just some more personal items to represent that they, there were people on the ground and uh, you know, death has no prejudice against any of that. But at the same time, I really wanted the focus to just be on the main character. Anyway, all things to learn for the future for the future cards. Stay tuned for the other cards coming along. I will start sketching a bunch now that I've finished these two. Um, I'm gonna sketch three in a row and paint three in a row. If you like the video and you like this art, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment below with whether you like it. What would you do for the landscape? Leave any comment below. I just, uh, I love chatting with you guys down there. Also, if you want to support the Tarot Card Project, head over to my Patreon. We are halfway through my first goal, which is very exciting. So thank you very much for that. I'm going to start reshuffling a couple of things on Patreon. There will soon be exclusive tutorials on my my Patreon. So if you're on the top tier, you will have access to a tutorial series that I'm working on. This first one is about acrylic painting and I take you so in depth with everything. So if you want to consider doing that, that really helps me out. And head over to the shop, consider buying a sticker. Everything helps. And in between all the videos, make sure you head over to my Instagram as well if you want to see what I'm up to. I post on stories quite a lot and I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye. Love ya. Thank you.